That's no, y'all my do wife and me, man. Oh, man. It was something we wanted to do, man, because we ain't never gave this award out to nobody. Oh, nobody wow. has one like this. God, no, man. So it came in. Boss. Unboxing is real, man. Boss. This it, baby. Yeah, it's going down, man. I never thought I'd be doing this. This guy mean a lot to me, man. I couldn't go see him empty-handed. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we going to talk. So before I get into your history and so forth, mm -hmm. you know, we can't start our podcast without doing this to you right now, okay? Okay. Look at, look at, look at, yeah, look at, yeah. Look at. We yeah. have this right here. You said doing this to me. I thought y'all were <laughs> That's no, my wife something. and me, man. Oh, man. It was something beautiful. we wanted to do, man, because we ain't never gave this award out to nobody. Oh, nobody wow. has one like this. God, no, man. So it came in. Boss. The unboxing is real, man. Boss. This it, baby. Boss. Yeah, it's going down, man. I never thought I'd be doing this. This guy mean a lot to me, man. I couldn't go see him empty-handed. So I went on ordered him the new plaque that we're going to be giving out. He's right here different, man. I ain't no picking up out of here. This thing, ooh, kind of heavy, man. Man, look at that thing. Man, Bum B, man. These guys mean so much to me, man. I, I rock with them, man. Boss Talk 101, man. It, it, this here, this, this is what everything that, that's why we do, do this, man. This guy right here. Man, Bernard yeah, Freeman, man. Stroke. Check it, man. So Congratulations. Best boss wishes, man. That boy made it on Boss Talk, man. Boss I'll let your boy, man. Hot, boss hot, Talk, one of the bosses talk. Bum B. So we're going to present you with this award because you know how much we're fans of you and UGK. And it says, thank you, Bernard Freeman Bum B. It says, in recognition of your many accolades, including starring UGK with Pimp C, the group that became a staple in the South, as the hardest duo ever. But not only that, Bum B created five solo albums, becoming a pioneer in the Houston, Texas culture. He also gave back by being a professor in education, teaching hip hop and religion at Rice University. Now owning a very successful restaurant, Trill Burgers, where the patties are flavorful and crisp. Hey. Man, thank y'all so much. <laughs> On behalf of myself, and man, the family, I am honored to accept this award. Man, I, I mean, we, we, like I said, we never gave that out, man. And to be honest with you, I, I just, I told my wife, I said, I might, I might not get this chance again, but I know, because uh, you never know, man. But me and you, when you, my uh, mentor would always tell me after thirty five, man people start passing he passed away now but he was like man I went to so many funerals after 35 man and I think sometimes people take life for granted mm -hmm. so any Very opportunity true. I get it's like man I gotta do the best I can just cause I gotta seize that moment you know what I mean well it's deeply appreciated man yeah. thank and you we so give, much we do give awards and the reason why we do that is because there's so many people who've been grinding and hustling doing what they've been doing for years and not have not gotten any recognition especially from home team you understand what I mean so we like to try to show that we appreciate them because so many people who came on our podcast and got awards and be like you know what I've been doing this for 30 40 years and I've yeah, never, never gotten, gotten anything any recognition DJs before. stuff like oh that. absolutely absolutely so, so many know. people put in a lot of work man and they're the ones that are really the, the foundation right. of the culture you know what I'm saying? a lot of people you know, sold in the hip hop culture, particularly Southern hip hop and Texas music. And you never hear people give them their accolades. Daryl Skies, the K Reno's, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. People like that, the RP Colas, you know, there are a lot of people that were there in the beginning, the Steve Farnier's, um, you know, that literally set the tone for hip hop even being accepted in popular culture in the city. Mm -hmm. Cause a lot of people didn't want to hear when rap came on back then Indeed. in the club or the radio, you know, but we've come a long way to being basically the world's most popular culture. And so it's a blessing to have lived long enough to see it get where it's at. Man, man, you definitely so true. So I like to go back in um, how you were raised, where you're from and so forth. Yes. Um, were you born Port Arthur or Houston? I was born in Houston. Born in Houston? I was born Houston? in Houston, but then my parents divorced and I ended up moving to Port Arthur. How old were you when they divorced? Um, I would have been about, I guess, 10. 10, do you remember? Yeah. Yeah, no, I remember because it was just me and my mom and mm. everything it was everything really changed. It was like my fifth grade year mm -hmm. and like the whole dynamic of life changed. You know mm. what I'm saying? Because I went from living in like a three bedroom house to an apartment. You right. know, I grew up and I, I was born into a house, into mm. a, a home with a mother and a father. And then switching from that to just being me and my mom, it really changed the perspective of how I looked at my mom. Were you, you know close with your dad? Uh, not really. My dad um, traveled a lot. 
And like my brother, I, I have three brothers, but they're all older than me. Mm. So they all had a much closer relationship. How much older? With my dad, uh, five, six, and seven years. Okay. okay. Yeah, so they all had a closer relationship right. with him because by the time I came in, he was traveling more with his mm -hmm, job. Mm -hmm. So it, it didn't affect, it affected you, but it didn't affect you that much? No, no. I mean, it, it, it affected me because... You know, I just watching what my mother had to go through. Go through. I never, I never seen my mother have to struggle mm. like that before. You know, and, you know, mm. I would hear her cry sometimes, and it was rough because my brothers weren't there where I was. My brothers were older at that point, so did they um, live with your dad? Yeah, okay. Yeah. And then one of them was already out of the house, mm. so it was just a different family dynamic. But did I you, just wanted to, you know, I just didn't want to see my mom have to do everything right. she had to do. Did you ever get to go live with him? Uh, yeah, I did that for about three months, and then I had to get out of there. <laughs> How old were you when you did that? I was 18 when I graduated. Um, oh, okay. I graduated. The night I graduated, I left and went and moved in with my dad mm -hmm. because I told my mom I wanted to rap. Mm -hmm. And, like, I was, you know, I had a little scholarship, and she was like, no, nah, I'm not supporting that, you know, because by that point, all three of my brothers had made mistakes. Two of them have been mm -hmm. habitual criminals. Mm -hmm. And so my mom did a lot of things different with me that she didn't do with my right. brothers because she thought she had spoiled them. Mm -hmm. So she was a lot more strict with me. And so when I told her I was going, I wanted to make rap music, uh, she was like, no, nah, I can't support that. You, you can't, you got a week to get out of my house. Mm -hmm. And so I just left graduation night. My wow. brother came and, uh, to my graduation. I said, I'm just going to leave with you. And then so I left, I went to my dad's house, and then at six in the morning, my daddy woke up, woke me up, and was like, nobody live here for free, time to go to work. My dad had a landscaping company, so basically I cut grass the day after I graduated, all summer, and tarring roofs and painting. And you didn't like and it? And all that, and I was like, I ain't, I ain't trying to do this over here with him like that. And mm -hmm. then I, you know, so I made some, some choices to go out and live on my own, and you know, so that, that was that, it. That's what, that's, that's kind of my story too. I, I, Mom left dad at nine and we moved, but you was between houses from grandma to Annie to whoever, you know, and then they all had kids. It was like, you know, a lot of times, a lot of men didn't know how to be fathers, you know, cause uh, some of them did. My granddaddy stayed with my mom, but my dad, he just was drinking and just doing what he do. And, and, but I ended up staying with him cause I was like, man, I'm gonna stay over here. Cause we, from nine to on up, I would learn from him. Mm -hmm. And you know that we were just talking mm -hmm. about that downstairs. Like he wouldn't tell me nothing, but it's what he's done in front of me that gave me, you know, some stuff to go with far as on the hustle. You know right. what I'm saying? But I flipped it and changed it to something else because I wasn't for the hall pub wood and be in the woods, man. I'm not for to do that. You no, no <laughs> I, I made a decision. I didn't want to work. A lot of my family was late, like day laborers. Yeah, you know yeah. What I'm saying they worked outside, they had very hard lives, and I was like, I didn't, I didn't want to have that life. But I ended up making decisions that gave me a different kind of a hard life. You know. Yeah, me too, me too. But one thing I always would say as I got older and I realized, um, I learned. I always say that if a man and woman together and they split, especially if you have a boy, I always feel like when the boy become like a teenager age, he needs to go with a dad because a mom can't teach a boy how to become a man. Luckily, one of my older brothers who was not like in and out of jail, he was more like a, a surrogate father to me in that okay. way when I was away from my home. At this point, my mother um, had remarried. She remarried a really good man too. Okay. So I did have a father figure in the house. That's good. But then I still had to go and be supposedly, I would have to be with my dad for different vacations and different mm -hmm. times of the year, but I would just go to my brother's house because they live in the same apartment complex. So I would just go stay at of my course. brother's house. And I, I learned a lot from my brother. And, you know, there was really, I didn't feel like there was anything more I would gain. I would still see my dad every day, but I was learning the type of things I needed to learn from my brother at the time. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gonna talk.